Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna go through an asset tokenization use case that we've built entirely using tools and features that are available on the settlement BPASS platform. Asset tokenization is really interesting because it allows for increased liquidity while also reducing transaction costs and improving the security around buying and selling of assets. The advantage of using blockchain for asset tokenization is that it allows you to fractionalize assets. So you can actually allow uh, users or clients to be able to buy and sell uh, assets without needing to buy and sell a whole number of that asset. So you can buy and sell fractions of uh, some assets that you've tokenized. Um, and so in this demonstration, um, let's begin to create our own assets that we want to tokenize and fractionalize. So to start, I'm gonna click here at the top, create assets. Now let's say we want to allow for um, our cooperative grocery store um, to sell shares inside of it. So we're gonna say there are uh, a thousand shares in our cooperative grocery store. We want to give those shares and sell those shares to people who become members of our cooperative grocery store. So the type is shares, and we're going to create this asset. Um, and so we haven't done anything with the blockchain yet. All we've done is we've created the existence of our assets uh, in our uh, local database for this, um, for this uh, application. So what we're going to do next is we're going to tokenize it. So let's say we have we have a thousand shares, right? And we want to allow for people to buy and sell at half a share. So if we have a thousand shares available, we want to create a supply of 2000 shares. So each token is equivalent to half of a share. And we're gonna click tokenize now. And now we are doing the, the blockchain part. We are creating the tokens that are now available on our blockchain network. Um, and so we've tokenized, we've created 2000 tokens and we want to click here for available for minting. So right now we've created 2000 tokens, but they're all held at the admin. So let's say that the co cooperative grocery store, um, someone has already purchased some shares. Let's say it's uh, 50 shares to be a member of our cooperative grocery store. So we're going to mint 50 tokens. And uh, Josh has bought 50 tokens in order to become a member of the cooperative grocery store. So they're purchasing uh, 50 tokens, which is equivalent to 25 shares. Um, so we're going to click mint. And so we are giving these 50 tokens to Josh. And we can click here under tokens and circulation. We can see all of the different uh, assets that we've created and tokenized. So here's cooperative grocery store. Um, we see we have one holder. So that's Josh and 50 tokens. If we click view token holders, um, we'll get this little modal that'll pop up and show that Josh um, with his wallet address has 50 tokens. We can even go um, in our admin portal. We can see all the users that are in our network and we can even create more users if we needed to. So if more people wanted to become members of our grocery store, we can create that user um, right here in the admin portal. Um, if we needed to, let's say we've accidentally created too many tokens, we can even go to burn tokens and we can burn uh, the tokens uh, in, of our uh, co-op grocery store. For example, um, let's say we don't want to fractionalize it. And so we want to burn it so that each share is equivalent to one, uh, one share. Each token is one share. Um, if we go to my wallet, we can even see these are all the tokens that are held by the admin. Since I'm uh, in the portal as an admin, I can see how many tokens are being held here. Uh, and if I go to my profile, I can see what my public address is for the admin. If I logged in as Josh, I would see his public address uh, there. Um, if we go to transaction log, what's really nice is that we've used the insights tool so that you're able to see the all of the activity that's happening on your blockchain network. So here, this is the latest transaction. So this is the 50 tokens that I've uh, minted and given to Josh for the cooperative grocery store. If I click transaction hash, it'll it'll take me to the uh, block explorer that we have associated with this application. We can see um, what this uh, transaction does or what this transaction did. Um, and we can see from uh, from the burn address. So this is minting basically uh, any token. We've given it to this address here. 
Um, this address is the address of Josh. So if we go to Josh's uh, address page, then we'll see all the tokens that they own. Um, if we go to the homepage of our Block Explorer, what's really nice is, of course, um, you can see all of the activity that's happening on our blockchain network. We have a video as well that goes through more detail on how the Block Explorer works. Um, but here we can see all of the type of information that you'd want to know to check the health of your uh, blockchain that your application is being built on top of. This one is using Hyperledger Bezu. So this is the type of um, blockchain that we're using and the type of transactions that we should expect. Um, so yeah, so that is the asset tokenization use case. Uh, with settlement platform, with the settlement platform, you can easily create any type of use case that is similar to this. Um, and what's really nice is that you can use entirely just the tools and features that we have inside our platform. So you don't need to uh, go out and look for any new type of tools or any new types of things in order to achieve what you need to achieve because we have it all inside of the platform. All right, so now let me show you how exactly we built out this demo use case for asset tokenization using entirely just features and functions that are available to you in the settlement BPASS platform. So here we're in our platform. This is the actual um, application instance that's being used to create the demo use case that we saw for asset tokenization. Um, and so if we click, we can start from, uh, from the top. We'll start with blockchain networks. We can see here that we have a Hyperledger Bezu running. Um, so that is the uh, blockchain that we're using, using Hyperledger Bezu. We can see that we already have a node that is up and running. So that is what's uh, keeping the network going. Um, smart contract sets, we see we have the tokenization smart contract set. So this is one of the contracts that are available to you in the IDE so that you can uh, use it for yourself if you want to use uh, or to create a use case for asset tokenization, then you already have the smart contract uh, basically ready for you there. If you go to the middleware, you see we have the graph running. This just helps us more easily query uh, on-chain information for our front end. We go to integration tools. We have Hazura and we have Integration Studio. Hazura is running to help us um, create the database for the first creation of our assets. So this is before it becomes tokenized. You see in the beginning that uh, we used, um, a, we created the assets before we tokenize it. And so it's stored in a database that is uh, run on Hazura. The integration studio is used to manipulate uh, information, either on-chain or off-chain, so that it is more readable for the user in the front end to help us create um, better APIs uh, for that. Uh, and so we continue, we go to storage. We are running IPFS. IPFS is helping us store our uh, JSON files. That is the, the functions as the metadata for the, um, uh, for the contract. So underneath the hood, our smart contract set for tokenization is actually uh, one for NFTs. And so NFTs, um, the ERC standard is able to hold uh, metadata uh, through JSON files. So this is where we store that. Um, we store it on IPFS. Uh, we continue, then we have our private key. So our private key is just what allows us to be able to um, deploy any contracts onto our blockchain network and to do all the things that we need to do. And then as you saw our insights, this is our block explorer. We're using block scout and we can see that it's running. Um, and this is what helps us see the um, information that is on chain to check the health of our blockchain and to check um, maybe our transactions through our transaction hash and see that it's, that it's gone through, for example. Um, so if I go back to the dashboard, you can see that we're using basically all of the features that are available to us on the settlement B plus. So we're showing how it can be very easy for any developer to get up and running to create uh, an application from the back end to the front end um, and begin to build on blockchain, um, including for their asset tokenization use cases. So there you go.